talking about just to start the if you look at the very top uh, longitudinal lie with cephalic presentation. So longitudinal lie does not necessarily mean head down. It literally just means up, the baby is lying up and down in the uterus. So even a breach or a feet first presentation is still a longitudinal lie. So what this chart is talking about is longitudinal lie with cephalic or head presentation. So I'm going to talk through these three colorful things first, um, and they're, you know, coded to the box below. So the dark blue says presenting part, and what that, you can see that explains, there's vertex, there's two types of vertex presenting parts, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, there's the brow presenting part. The brow presenting part is going to be right here. And then the presenting part that is a face presenting part or a face presentation, pretty self-explanatory. When the baby moves down into the pelvis and you're doing a cervical check, you're not going to be feeling a bony, bony part of the head. You're going to be feeling the baby's face, usually a nose. Pretty cartilage feels different from baby's head, so you can tell. And then the attitude, this kind of salmon-y color, the attitude is, think of it as being related to what is the baby's neck doing? So is the baby's neck completely flexed? Or is the baby's neck straight? Is the baby's neck sort of extended? Or is the baby's neck completely extended? Uh, that's attitude. The denominator, the green, is the bony part that you feel, ideally, feel in a cervical check, and it's going to determine for you, depending on where you feel it, it will determine the position of the baby. Now, position is not addressed in this chart at all, so keep that in mind, but I am going to talk about it because there's a couple situations that anyone who is studying obstetrics or midwifery has to be aware of. So now that I've kind of explained those three categories up there, I'll break it down into the columns. <laughs> sorry, I'm not used to using a pointer. Okay, I'm sorry. So we'll just talk about this one first. This is, I really should have a gold star by this one because this is the ideal situation of a baby being born vaginally is vertex posterior, attitude flexion, so it's going to look like this. So let's just start with the denominator. The denominator, the occiput, is the back of the baby's head right here. This is the occiput, that kind of bony part here. So when you're doing a cervical check, you're feeling the occiput and you're feeling the suture lines or the fontanelles of the baby's head. So for this situation here, we are going to be dealing with this part of the baby's head, this part of the occiput. This diameter around the baby's head right here is the suboccipital pragmatic diameter. That is the most prominent, important diameter to know. It's nine and a half centimeters. Vertex posterior with flexion. Attitude is flexion. Denominator is the occiput. You can see how the baby's nice and tucked in here. So this is where I will talk about position. So the position of a baby being born is dependent on where is the denominator in the pelvis. Is the denominator completely up and down facing the mother's, facing towards the ceiling, towards the mother's belly button, because that's the top of the pelvis, top of the pubic bone, that is anterior. Or is the denominator towards the bottom, towards the mother's rectum, towards the floor, that is posterior. So the most common way a baby is born is occiput anterior. The baby is looking down towards the floor. The occiput is towards the top of the pelvis or towards the mother's belly button, towards the ceiling. Occiput anterior or OA. That is the most common way a baby is born. Nine and a half centimeters, remember? Even when a baby is actually OP, occiput posterior, with the occiput facing towards the floor, the diameter is still the same diameter. It's still the suboccipital pragmatic diameter, still nine and a half centimeters. There can be issues when a baby is occiput posterior or OP, 
also known as sunny side up, but usually a baby can still be born OP because the diameter is still nine and a half and it can clear that pelvic bone. So think about vertex flexion occiput, can the position OA or OP can still be born vaginally. I'm gonna go to the end here next instead of going in order because that is not the case for a face presentation. For a face presentation, position is everything. So, presenting part is the face. <laughs> yeah. um, the attitude, instead of flexion, is hyperextension. The baby is completely, like, hyperextended. Okay, self-explanatory. The denominator, what we use to differentiate position of the baby, is the mentum, the chin. So instead of the occiput, the back of the head, you can see that for a cervical check, you're not going to be able to feel the occiput because it's going to be behind the baby's face. So that bony part that's going to help you figure out what position the baby is in is going to be the chin. The nose can help you too because you can feel cartilage nose. Um, but the mentum is the denominator for a face presentation. In a face presentation, the attitude is going to be hyperextension. For a face presentation, if the mentum or the chin is towards the ceiling, towards the mother's belly button. So you think the baby's face would be coming out upside down. So the nose would be upside down. That is mentum anterior, right? Because the chin is towards the top. M-A. That is a position where the baby can be born vaginally. The face will be bruised, um, but the baby's face will, you know, the bruising will get better and the baby can be born vaginally. Now. If the mentum is towards the floor, towards the mother's rectum, posterior, mentum posterior, so the face is actually coming out upright. So if you were to feel the nose or feel the chin and they were not upside down, mentum posterior. So the baby is not going to be able to clear the pelvic bone if the baby's position is mentum posterior, MP. The way I remember that in school is MP straight to C, MA, A-okay. You're welcome. I'm kidding. But seriously, that's that helps me remember it. And you look here, this is this is the diameter. It's actually the same diameter as the occiput denominator with flexion. But the sub mento pragmatic diameter, face presentation diameter, is completely dependent on the position. Whereas sub occipital pragmatic, nine and a half centimeters, is not dependent on the position of whether the baby can be born vaginally. So that's really important. Mentum posterior, MP, straight to C section. Mentum anterior, MA, A-OK. -okay. Now we'll go to the next uh, vertex presenting part, which is vertex medial. And the attitude for vertex medial is military, straight up and down. Stand up straight if you're in the military. The baby is straight up and down. The neck is completely straight, not flexed not extended at all, just straight military attitude. The denominator is still the occiput. But you look here. So unlike when the baby has flexion attitude and you've got this suboccipital pragmatic diameter of nine and a half, with a military attitude, the diameter, the occipital frontal diameter is 11 and a half centimeters. The thing about military attitude, vertex of military attitude, is it's not that the baby can't be born vaginally, the baby's just going to adjust its neck. That's all. So it's not an issue if a baby is vertex medial military attitude. The baby almost always is just going to end up, oh, sorry, pain brushing. The baby's just going to end up flexing into vertex posterior. So vertex medial with military attitude is not that exciting. The last one to talk about is the brow presenting part of the baby's head. That is a presenting part that cannot be born vaginally, and this is why. Right here. So with a brow presenting part, the attitude is partial extension. So look right here. Not straight up and down, not hyperextended, just a little bit, just a little. But what that does is it makes the diameter to be born through the pelvis this whole part the vertical mental diameter, 
that's 13 and a half centimeters. And unlike military attitude, where the baby can just easily flex and fix it, for a brow presentation, that partial extension, not so easy to fix, and typically these labors will stall, and it's going to be a C-section. The denominator for a brow presentation is the frontum. That would be difficult to feel specifically with a cervical check, at least for me it would, but what would be noticeable for this sort of presenting part would be that the labor isn't progressing, the baby's not moving down. The baby can't move down because this diameter is just too big to move down into the pelvis. So I hope that that was sort of helpful.